try and keep it as neat as possible, guys. Uh, it looks just under a bag of carnate skin, a good quarter, nearly a third, so and just more than half a bag really on this scene. So just give you an idea guys of what, what you need to mix. Um, I don't really know but that was the idea, I don't want to be having had a bit of a waste of water there, I don't want to be wasting material. It's just more stuff to clean up and dump. I'm gonna have to name this this one uh, plastering tips. <laughs> this, this video is just completely full of tips. So I have the scene all on there, as you know, two coats um, was the same mix. I would advise people newer to the trade to possibly just go with two, two smaller mixes. Um, but what, what I do after I have it all in, just before I flatten down, I scrape out and bucket. So as you can see here, this bucket here is it's more or less clean and I'll leave a wee drop whatever's left on the hawk and hopefully you don't, you don't have loads left and what that does is that will give you a wee bit of insurance guys if the legs of this here bead here is you know you need need more plaster on that you find when you're traveling in you're quick flattening that it's got to be hollow in it then that's time for you guys to fill it out with another wee drop of gear um, so if you throw it in the skip or in the bin or in the bag full of rubble, it's I wouldn't you know it's not going to be great for using. So I advise keep a wee drop um, of what what you have left over. Um, I don't want these all mixing loads too much and wasting it. But if there's a wee drop left over, keep it. And what I do is then I'm going to flatten all this in and possibly clean my angles, wash my bucket scrape that bit of plaster off the hawk but I'll not dump it still I'll keep it on either a board or you know an, an empty bag I'll put it on the top so that I can get access to it if you know whatever I need to be taste God knows how many times that the labor on site has cleared everything up and cleaned out and then something happens there's a wee scratch on the ceiling or something or a wall or you've dug your trowel in and you need an extra wee bit to fill it in and you can get it so that's your wee bit of insurance guys and a wee tip will help you out and so let's get back to working guys see when you're doing them beads the way I do it is trowel trowel towards the bead and then pull it along that bead guys you want to come along it if you trowel like that there eventually be a big curve in it there'll be an arch in it and that's Probably not too bad on this because I've got a bit of a bond, but if that was just a, a bead on 3-4mm coat, 
then most likely it'll curve the same as this fish eye lens. So you want to always come across there, and that'll kill any of that happening on this. Do, 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 do. that big wheel and here. So if we pull up on that we'll just create a curve. At this stage make sure everything's cleaned up guys. Tools, buckets, drill, the whole lot because that, that this stuff could pick up and you'll not have much time to get it trialed and clean up. So keep that in mind. Right so guys I'm gonna be busy editing editing all these clips but I wanted to come up here to this part of the scene I'm still I'm still in this hallway and um, talk about these beads so for instance I've put a stop bead here as you know and uh, this is timber so I wouldn't recommend plastering over timber guys but obviously we're gonna have this wee gap here to contend with and we've got to make that right and uh, bring this right in close see it we we gap just between the bead and the ceiling but um, probably should use a wee trial or something but most times I just push a wee bit of gear in guys and just finger it into the gap there and that all get is to have stuff in behind that later on la later on you can scrape it back and brush it up, I'll, I'll tidy it up, I can't do it here with holding the camera but I'll tidy that up a wee bit more with a, a tosser brush even, even a tosser brush instead of your finger, you don't want to be cutting your finger on the beads, sometimes you get a wee nick on them and it will open you, open you up. Um, there's another wee thing here I want to talk about, the top angle, let's walk up the stairs, so obviously this is my plaster and like I said these walls aren't getting done, this is actually wallpaper so I have to be very careful. I don't get too much water in. I know the walls were not easy stripped, so I don't have too much concern of the paper getting wet and coming off. P 
paint on them also but I'm going to show you how I deal with this edge if I show you up close I have overlapped it slightly and what I'll do later is I'll cut that all off but I want that to pick up a bit you can see it's very wet so after every three trials I'll pick that up um, later on later on in the video and I will get that scraped back and toss up brush nice and neat guys um, first time you do something like that will not be very easy and yes I could have put a stat bead on um, there but I didn't think it would be as neat as what I'm doing here I think this was the neatest way to go to feather it in and clean off that edge um, again yes you could use a stat bead if you're not confident doing this and put it in flush sometimes what you find with stat beads is guys and um, they'll bring a whole whole new world of problems stat beads are straight if this top wall here has a big big bow in it but sometimes they do um, it has a big bow in it or again a big bump you're going to find you're going to have to patch this in as well and it's going to be a nightmare so sometimes this option you know even if you cut your bead sometimes this may be the better option but yeah i'll come back to this part later on after i get all my trials up so this is pretty much the first wet trial now i do sometimes call the other trial a trial but really it's a flatten but you can call it a, a trial in if you want but really this is the stage where you might want to start adding water and the reason for that is just to basically lubricate the trowel so it doesn't tear the plaster any um, and the later stages you go the more water you'll most likely need to add to stop the turn happening and basically here you want to just get everything filled out as best as possible get your angles as cleaned as possible the cleaner they are now the easier they'll be to clean every stage so you're always wanting to they make it that wee bit better. I think there's actually a, a Japanese term for it called Kaizen. And what the word Kaizen means or what the term means is small improvements. So, you know, I think it's actually a really good term and a good a good way of thinking, guys, because if you move if you constantly make small improvements, so take this ceiling for example, every child I get, I'm trying to actually do one even better, even better, even better. Every ceiling I do, if I'm trying to make it a better ceiling than the last one, better, better, better. Every job, better, better, better. Cleaner, cleaner, cleaner. You see where it goes, guys. And you can see, keep the back of the trial clean. And it'll also help your angles stay clean. But basically, if you adapt that word Kaizen into your work life for plastering, or just into your life in general, and you're always trying to make small improvements, it's easy to make small improvements guys, it's harder to make big massive leaps but if you just make the small improvements then o over time they'll add up and accumulate to being large improvements and it'll be a lot greater of a leap then in small steps and hopefully that's this channel is all about for, for beginners and people new to the trade or trend home improvements that you'll find that with these videos you can start off with the ones with less detail, a wee bit more simple, and build up into the, the more the, the ones like this, and you'll 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 see your own self improve from video to video, time by time. So hopefully you've enjoyed that wee word lesson. So just remember, Kaizen guys, small improvements. So every trial you do, you're trying to beat that trial the next time, you're trying to improve on it. Every angle you clean, oh next time you go around, oh, trying to improve on it, trying to make it better.